Have you ever wanted to ride around my shop, strapped to my chest, watching while I work? Well, today you're in luck. I mean, sort of, like, like with a camera. You'll see. Welcome back to Cloud42, I'm James. This week, I have been working on lots of little projects around the shop, not filming them, and enjoying myself immensely. Even though it's been a week of small projects, I thought it might be fun to set up a bunch of cameras, strap on a GoPro, and take you through one of them from start to finish in real time with no edits. It'll give you a rare glimpse behind the scenes to see how my shop organization actually works in practice, and it'll give me a chance to be embarrassed about how my shop organization actually works in practice. This is my small Nogaflex indicator holder. Now, they make these with a couple of different ends on them. This one I purchased in North America, and it has a 3 8 inch hole to fit standard 3 8 inch stems on indicators that are typically sold here. So of course the indicator just goes in there, quick turn of the thumb screw snugs it down, and holds it securely so you can position it to take you know whatever measurements you need. However, as I've been picking up more metric and European gear, I'm running into indicators that have an eight millimeter stem instead of a three eighths inch stem. And of course, they don't fit in any of my indicator holders. So today what I wanna do is make a little adapter sleeve that will fit on the eight millimeter stem and fit into the three eighths inch hole to hold these indicators. And I've got a bunch of holders that those will work in and a bunch of indicators that I need to hold. Now I know most of the dimensions I need, 3 8 eight millimeters, but I don't know the thickness of this, so I'll just grab a caliper and check and see how long this needs to be. And it looks like this clamp is just under a half inch. So if I make the business end of the adapter a half inch long, that'll stick out a little bit on each side. That should be just fine. So let's start by going over to the stock drawer and just look through my round stock and look for a little scrap that'll work. Here's a piece of half inch aluminum. That should work just fine. Now I've got this little table that I have clamped in my bench vise and that's what I use as a staging area for small tools. So I'll just stick the caliper there for now. And before I do anything on the lathe, I'll take off my watch and my ring so that you don't have to leave me comments to tell me to take off my watch and ring when I'm working on the lathe. I've got the six jaw chuck already in here and it will go down small enough to hold a half inch round, which is what we've got here. I need to make sure I have enough sticking out. Unfortunately, I have the GoPro strapped over the scale that's in my pocket, but I managed to get it out without making too big of a mess. We'll make sure I've got a little over a half inch, five eight should be plenty. Tighten that down. Throw the scale on the bench because my pocket is covered with the GoPro harness and grab a turning tool. I'll start this nice and slow and then bring it up to a speed that's more appropriate for cutting aluminum. And while we're at it, we might as well get a tool that's more appropriate for cutting aluminum. Something jammed there in the drawer. Now grab a tool with a polished insert instead of an insert that's intended for steel. So this has got a high angle. It's polished to a very sharp edge and it'll leave a nice finish on the aluminum. Touch off on the end and face off the end of the part. And now I've pulled away from the part and realized I didn't get a zero. So I'll make another light pass, bring in touch, make another light facing pass, leave it where it is and zero the Z axis of the DRO. So that gives us the end of the part. Now I'll touch the edge and make a pass to establish an initial diameter. I have no idea what this dimension is. I'm just gonna try to clean it up so that I can take an initial measurement and calibrate the DRO. I don't have a micrometer out yet. Those are in the drawer over here. I'll go ahead and check it with caliper. That'll work. 491 and a half. I'll just put that in the DRO. I'll grab the micrometer later when it really matters. At this point, I just want to turn this down to a diameter that'll be the right dimension for a little lip on the end of the collar to keep it from falling through the hole. And that's not precision at all, so caliper should be fine. Looking at the DRO, dialing in to take most of the material in the first pass. 
I'm feeding this. I think the default on the electronic lead screw is five thou per revolution. That's fine. I'm not in a huge hurry. Then we'll bring it into the final outside dimension here, which should be 420 thou, I believe, and just take a pass across. And since I'm not taking a very deep cut, you can see I'm getting a nice long chip. Just keep my hands clear of that. Aluminum's not nearly as bad as steel, but they can still wrap up around things and cut you pretty good. I'm putting the cross slide back where it was during the cut, just looking at the DRO going back to that dimension. And then I'll grab a micrometer to see what size we actually got. And that's the drawer with my metric micrometers. I need an inch micrometer, which is over here. Maybe I should put those in the same drawer. Just take a quick measurement off of this, see where we actually are. And then enter that value into the DRO. So now we should have a fairly accurate representation in the DRO. As the cut pressure changes, it'll be more or less accurate, but in aluminum with a really sharp insert, it's not generally that big of a deal. So I'll come in using the DRO half an inch, which is the distance I want to the, to the end of the smaller turn portion of the sleeve. Put a mark in the part just so that I have a visual indication of where to stop. I can look at the DRO, but it's always good to have a scratch there so I can look at it visually and know when I'm getting close. And I'll start taking some passes to bring this down to 375 thou, or 3 eighths of an inch. Disengaging the power feed for the last few thousandths and feeding that by hand. I'll feed in, get a little bit closer to my depth. Trying to split this last cut in half, and I don't like what I see on the DRO, so I'll back that up and try again, get a little bit closer. And then take what I am hoping will be my final pass. If I did everything right, this should come exactly to the correct dimension. I'll feed the last few thou by hand up against the shoulder. Then I'll wind the tool back out and we'll take a measurement here and see where we actually ended up. This should be exactly 375 thou. And we're a little bit big, we're like a thousandth big. So I will try to take a thousandth off of this. Now I'm a little bit afraid of overcutting this. So I'll wind back in with the DRO to my 375 and then I'll take maybe two tenths just to see what happens because with the tool pressure off it might cut a little bit deeper but boy that's a fine cut that is just raising dust but I'm not going to get greedy I'll actually finish the cut and then check it again and see where it actually is because if I overcut this then I got to go grab another piece of stock from the scrap bin and start all over okay that did take just a couple of tenths so let me go ahead and wind in a few more tenths and try one more pass and see if we can get this to the dimension. I don't want it to be a little bit too big because then I'll be constantly fighting it or fighting the spring in it when I'm putting it in and out of the indicator holders. Now well, that looks like the seven or eight tenths I need. Stop the power feed, bring it to the shoulder and see where we ended up. Now this should be dead on 375. Okay, that looked big. No, I must have had a chip under it. That looks perfect. Okay, the next thing we need to do is hit the camera. And then we need a chuck, and it looks like I've already got that in the tailstock. I'll bring that over. If you press the chuck up against the carriage and then wind the carriage left and right, it makes it really easy to move it freely. Now, what size drill do I need? Uh, I've got a chart up here that you can't quite see. It says eight millimeters is 315 thousandths. And so I'm looking over at my drill chart. I could do a 5 16 drill, which is 312 and a half. That's too close. A letter N drill at 302 thousandths should be, though, about the right size if I'm going to ream it to eight millimeter, which is my plan. So we'll grab a screw machine length letter N drill, put that in the tailstock chuck, and put a hole in this. The precision on this, the concentricity is not that big of a deal because this isn't something that spins, so I'm not going to worry about spot drilling it. 
lock down my tailstock. Mine doesn't have a leather lever. Doesn't have a leather either. It doesn't have a lever. Use a little bit of A9 lubricant on the drill and just push it through. That drill seems to be cutting really well. So I'm just now realizing I had the tailstock partially extended when I started drilling, so I'm probably not going to have enough stroke on the tailstock to get completely to the depth. So I'll wind that all the way back. Ugh. Making myself dizzy, probably making you dizzy. Loosen this up and we'll bring it in a little bit closer. Lock it down again and continue drilling. Go back into the bottom of the hole. That probably was deep enough, but there, now we're through. Back that all the way out again. This is why I like using the collet holder on the carriage because you don't have to wind the tailstock in and out and things don't take as long. Okay, put the drill away. And then we need an eight millimeter reamer. I've got my trays color coded. Purple is metric. There's an eight millimeter straight flute chucking reamer. Put that in the tailstock and ream out the hole after hitting the camera again. Okay, the world stopped shaking. Lock the tailstock down again. Run this nice and slow. Grab some A9, lubricate that up, and just push it through. And that looks like I got close enough that we're not generating a lot of chips that are going to clog up the reamer. It's about 13 thou left that come out, so that looks like that is just about right. I just ran that through until I didn't feel any resistance. I could feel it lighten up as it passed all the way through the hole. Blow the chips off of this. And I turned the air off instead of on. Let's turn it back on. Got a regulator on this air blowgun just to keep the pressure down so it doesn't drive chips all over the shop. Put away the reamer. Now I need a deburring tool. I've got a little Noga rotary countersink here, and I'll just use that by hand under power. Deburr the inside of the hole. And then I'll grab a, a high speed steel tool to, to deburr, put a tiny chamfer on the outside. You can see the wall, that part's pretty thin. I kind of thought I might have a little bit of trouble with the thin wall, but it's what, it's, it's less than a millimeter. It's what, 0.7 millimeters or something. But it seems to be behaving itself. So now we just need to part it off. We'll grab the parting tool. And this has a, a tin coated or titanium nitride coated insert that's really intended for steel, but this is such a small part, I'm not really worried about it. I also don't care about the width of the little collar around the top, so I'm just positioning this by eye. I do want to catch the part and not have to chase it in the chip tray, so I've got a little piece of steel TIG welding rod here. Put that in the tailstock chuck, and I'll run that inside the part just so that it can't go anywhere when it finally parts off. A little spin to make sure everything clears. Turn it up nice and fast, and just push it through. Just like butter. Grab the part off here. Now we have another end that needs to be deburred. And I'll just use the same rotary countersink to take care of that. Now, of course, it's full of chips, so grab some compressed air. And the turning on that part should now be done. Let's check and make sure it actually fits.
and it won't go in with this tightened down, but with it loose, that's a nice fit. And then the eight millimeter indicator, miller meter, millimeter indicator goes right in. There is a little bit of play. I think the stem on that is a little bit smaller uh, than actually eight millimeters. I think it's like 7.98 or 7.95, which is a little smaller than I expected, but it's a good fit. Now, because I have the dual vices on here and I need to work on the outside edge, I've got to run the table way over and then I'll just clamp the part here in the edge of the vise for slitting. And this is a not a strong part, so I'll just hold it just tight enough to hold it in position, make sure it's secure, but I don't need to don't need to clamp it down and destroy it. I grab a fine tooth slitting saw and my slitting saw arbor and a hex wrench to drive the screw in the end of that. This arbor I, I made, I don't think I did a video on it, but it's made to fit in the Tormach tooling system for my CNC converted mill, but it works just fine here. Any place where I've got an R8 collet. So I'll grab the, make sure there's no collet in the mill already, and I'll grab the Tormach TTS collet, which is just a shortened three quarter inch collet. Put that in, put the tool in behind it, and use the air draw bar to draw it in. Now I just need to lower this and get it into position to make the cut. And I am not going to bother touching off. I'm not going to bother indicating. I'm not going to bother with anything. I'm just going to eyeball this. Because all we need is a slit through it. And if it's at slightly the wrong angle, no one will ever even know. Okay, that looks good for height. I'm just checking to make sure the mill is actually in back gear so I can run the spindle in reverse and it'll go slowly. And now I'm just sort of siding down the blade to line it up. And I think we should be good to make the cut. As usual, slitting saws always run out a little bit. Not even bothering with lubricant. This is such an easy cut. Just advancing it slowly. I can kind of feel the feedback in the handle. There's not much. But that's it. And because I'm holding it and clamping it end to end rather than trying to hold it in some other way, there's no pressure on it. So it doesn't really spring open or close when it comes loose. Okay, it is slit all the way through. So now we need to grab some tools and deburr it because it did raise up a burr on the inside and on the outside. And I'll just grab some little deburring tools. Take this over to the bench. The tool I'm going to use here is a little kind of reverse conical tool with an angled tip on the end. And I'm just going to run this through the groove and it will shave the burr off. Nice and simple. Do this from both ends. And then do the same thing on the inside. This is just a super cheap deburring set I grabbed from Amazon. I don't even know. It couldn't have been $10 for like five or six different tools. Okay, that should be that. Still fits nicely on the indicator. Fits nicely in the indicator holder. And the question is, does it clamp down firmly? And the answer to that is, yes it does. That's gonna be great for using this indicator holder in the comparator stand, which also has a 3 8 inch hole in the clamp. I've also got a metric a 10 millimeter dial indicator here. I'll just throw that on the bench just to test its durability. Yep, still works. And the stem on this one is much closer to eight millimeters, so it's actually a better fit in the adapter. And that looks good as well. It's nice and secure, and it loosens and retightens with a little quick flick of the knob. 
sleeve doesn't fall out of the holder. And it's a close enough fit on the indicator that it doesn't fall off of there. So I'm going to call that a win. Nice. I think we're done here. That was kind of fun. You rarely get to see the real time flow of me working in the shop, grabbing tools from drawers and moving from machine to machine. And to be honest, I don't get to do it as much as I'd like because I'm always setting up cameras and missing the focus on important shots. Did you like this format? Did you learn anything? I sure did. I learned that I spend a lot of time walking over to where I store my drills and reamers and they're only there because that's where the drill press used to be. I also might want to think about keeping a 25 millimeter micrometer in my Kennedy chest. If you like what I do here and you want to be a part of it, think about joining the crew over on Patreon. I'll put a link in the video description. Thank you for watching.